Whether you like them, love them or simply despise them, nobody can argue the fact that Chelsea Football Club are an incredibly successful football team. Yes, Roman Abramovich did have a lot to do with that. He did pour a lot of money into this football team. But with the ongoing battle in Ukraine and Russia, which we just won't delve into at all in this video, Roman Abramovich's time at Chelsea seems like it's going to be cut very short. So I thought to myself, instead of rebuilding Chelsea as they are, we're going to strip them of all the best players strip them of pretty much all of their money send them straight to the fourth tier of english football and rebuild them from the ground up this is the league two chelsea rebuild if you did go on to enjoy this video be sure to leave a like smash the hell out of that subscribe button the support on this channel over the past month has been absolutely incredible we are aiming for 3,000 subscribers by the end of this year ladies and gentlemen if you have yet to see one of my rebuild videos before here are the rules the main objective of this rebuild is to win the Champions League. I can make any transfers that I want, making it as realistic as possible. All games have to be simulated, but the Champions League final has to be played. Now that you know how this works, strap yourselves in and enjoy the video. So the way that I've done this, I've basically transferred away all the Chelsea players that were above 66 rated. So we still have the likes of Vale, we still got the likes of Ballo, Bukin as well. But the rest of the players that are in this team, I've transferred from literally every other league I could possibly find. It's been completely random and no player in this team is above 66 rated. So that's pretty much what I've done in a nutshell. Let's kickstart this rebuild. As I always do, I always scan the Youth Academy in the lower league rebuilds and the top tier league rebuilds as well. And we have stumbled upon an absolute gem. Jack Monk is 16 years old, 68 rated already. Has a potential between 79 and 94. He's 5 star, 5 star. You better believe he is going straight into that starting 11. And our first proper transfer of this window is bringing in Oscar Venegas for 1.75 million. And we have made yet another signing, bringing in Frederick Brandhoff for just under 1.5 million and this is how the team looks after that transfer window has come to an end the first player that catches my eye is our star man monk 70 rated already all i've done is converted him to that right winger position and he's gone up to 70 rated this is going to be a season isn't it? he is going to tear league two apart i would like to think we could get automatic promotion in the first season if we went from league two to the premier league getting consistent promotions that would be truly a record in this rebuild series we have a at the midway point of this season and we are in the top four to be fair there's only four points that separates fifth place from first place so it's really all to play for in the second half of the season if we can pick up a bit of form go on a win streak there's a very good chance we can go up as champions to start this transfer window we have brought in stefan marinovic on a free after the first transfer window came to a close i sent a scout out to the netherlands to find an attacking minded player and we have found this guy stefan van der Meer. he's 17 years old he's a right winger at this moment in time i want to convert him to a central attacking midfielder and then stick him straight into that starting lineup and this is how the team looks after that transfer window has come to an end and i've got to say this team has dramatically improved since the start of this season you've got monku 74 rated Vale 66 rated sabawe is 66 rated hell of a lot of improvement i can't wait to see how this team looks at the end of this season and speaking of the end of this season i really hope come the end of this season we've got automatic promotion so it is the end of this season and as i expected to be fair after how we did for the first half of this season we have gone up from league two as the champions northampton were second place 10 points behind us but let's be honest there was no one really catching us and port vale have joined us in promotion so it is ourselves northampton and port vale who got promoted to league one meanwhile it was qpr who won the fa cup out of all teams liverpool won the carabao cup oxford united won the papa john's trophy az won the europa conference league dortmund won the europa league and it was Bayern munich who won the champions league jack monk has seriously impressed me this time eight increased in his overall in only one season if we can keep hold of this guy for the remainder of this rebuild, this man is going to be 99 rated by the end of this rebuild. I'm telling you. Harvey Vale, he's gone up by 6. 69 rated at only 18 years of age. Okashiwa's impressed me, to be fair. He's gone up to 68 rated. Not a bad player at all. Definitely going to be interesting to see how we fare in League One. So our first two transfers in Season 2 have been free agents. The first one being Marcelo Acuna, 17 years old, 69 rated. And the second one is a guy called Victor Ayert, 5'9", 17 years of age and 71 rated. We're doing so well this transfer window picking up bargains. We brought in Lise Mousset on a free. 
And we brought in yet another free agent, this time in the name of Kevin Schlotterbeck, and he is a massive addition to the team. We have just made our first sales of this transfer window, starting off with Ryota Aoki for 560,000, and we have just sold Sebastian Gerardo for 2 million. We have also just sold Riku Danzaki for 1.3 million. We have just brought in a brand new keeper by the name of Luis Malagon for just under 3 million. We have also just sent out Ballo on a two year loan deal. We have also just sold Joni Calco for half a million, and this is how the team looks after that transfer window has come to an end and this team is looking very sexy considering it's in league one i am hoping for automatic promotion this year i think anything less than that is pretty disappointing if you ask me at the midway point of this season we are absolutely killing it in league one with five points clear of second place hull city it does look like we're getting promoted yet again we have began this transfer window by sending out josh brookin on a short-term loan deal we've just strengthened our midfield a little bit more by bringing in Shandon Baptiste from Brentford for 2.45 million. And this is now what the team looks like after that transfer window has come to an end. This team is definitely ready for the championship. We've got a very, very strong team. I think we may need to buy another central attacking midfielder next season. But other than that, I'm very happy with where this team is. Hopefully we can just keep playing well, keep a form, and then hopefully win League One. So at the end of season two, we have become League One champions and we have gained promotion to the championship along with Hull City. The playoffs are between Rotherham, Charlton, Athletic, MK Dons and Plymouth. I have absolutely no idea who I'd choose to win out of those four. So let's find out who went up with us. So it is ourselves, MK Dons and Hull City who are promoted to the championship after MK Dons absolutely battered Rotherham United in the playoff finals. Meanwhile, it was Aston Villa of all teams to win the FA Cup. It's nice to see a different team win the FA Cup every now and then, I must admit. And we're back to normal with Liverpool winning the Carabao Cup. Wigan Athletic won the Papa John's Trophy. Spurs won the Europa Conference League. AC Milan won the Europa League. And it was Manchester City who won the Champions League. What a signing this guy turned out to be. Lise Moussa, 74 rated, 24 goals, 3 assists. We've got Jack Monk going up 6 again. This guy is going to be incredible for us in the seasons to come. Randolph had a decent season affairs. Centre midfielder, 13 goals and 8 assists. Not bad at all. Harvey Vale is beginning to show what he's about. I aren't sugarcoating it. It is pretty decent stats. It's pretty decent to see how we're doing two seasons, two promotions in a row. Let's make it to third in the championship. We begin season three by finding an absolute goldmine of a player. Liam Tardy, 19 years old, 73 rated. I just find it quite weird that for a Frenchman, his name's Liam Tardy. That's the most un-French name I've ever heard in my life. We have just sold Ilya Sabawi for 2.15 million. We also have just sold Luz Malagon for just under 5 million as well. God bless free agents, man. We have just picked up the replacement keeper, Arnaud Tenas, for absolutely nothing. We've just done a little bit more business as well selling Sandes Jingan for 760,000 and we have agreed to send Lewis Hall out on a two year loan deal. The free agents in this transfer window are goated man. We have just picked up Hamzit Chowdhury for absolutely nothing. I've just brought in another signing to strengthen the defence. We've brought in Cameron Humphreys Grant for just over three and a half million and this is how the team looks after the transfer window has come to an end and I'd be lying if I said I wasn't expecting a top six finish at least from this team. There's no way we don't get promotion. This team is far too strong to stay in the championship what i absolutely love about this team though is it's got absolutely everything it's got free agents youth academy players players that we brought in from different teams it has literally got everything and it is the perfect mixture but like i've just said i am expecting promotion one way or the other this season so we come to the midway points of this season and we are in the top six don't get me wrong but bloody hell, we're like 9 points off 2nd spot and 12 points off 1st place Brighton. Now that is slightly disappointing. I would have liked to have been in the top 2 at the midway point of the season. But realistically speaking, it doesn't really matter at the midway point of this season where we are. It only matters at the end. And let's be honest, a lot can happen in half a season. And we have started this transfer window by bringing in Manuel Lanzini on a free. We have also just brought in Marco Cadenes, the youngster from Argentina 
on a free as well. And this is how the team looks after that transfer window has come to an end. Now, there's clearly some spots for improvement if we do get promoted to the Premier League next season. Need to brush up on this defence a bit. Definitely need a new keeper because 75 rates to keeper in the Premier League will get his backside handed to him. I want to leave the front three alone for now. Musa really is the only weak link out of the three, but it's definitely the defence that needs the most work. And also with the fact that we will be in the Premier League, hopefully next season, we'll be able to spend a decent amount of money, but we have to get to the Premier League first. So at the end of the season, we didn't gain automatic promotion, unfortunately. We were close to it though. We were only five points off Watford, second place, first place Brighton. Jesus Christ, they ran away with it in the end. So it is ourselves, QPR, Blackburn and Cardiff City in the playoffs. So we made it past Cardiff City, 2-1 on aggregate, it finished. So it is ourselves versus Blackburn in the playoff final. Let's see if we can make it three out of three and gain promotion to the Premier League in just three seasons. Can we come on Chelsea are back into the Premier League where they belong and this does mean we can finally start spending some decent money we obviously won't go overboard because we still are building them from the ground up but we will be given a good amount of money for gaining promotion into the Premier League meanwhile it was Liverpool who won the FA Cup Manchester City won the Carabao Cup Bergamo Calcio won the Europa Conference League Olympic Lyon won the Europa League and it was PSG this time who won the Champions League why am I not surprised that it was Monk who ran away with with it stats wise 24 goals three assists we've got Moose to be fair he's been a very good signing I wasn't too sure how we do but he's become a very very good player for us 18 goals and three assists Harvey Vale's got up to 79 rated I am very happy we've been able to keep hold of this guy 14 goals 11 assists this season Tard Tardy has done incredibly well. oh my days what an absolute steal this guy was. The only thing I think we need to brush up on in the Premier League next season is the defence. Everywhere else, I actually think we're quite solid. And like I've just said, we can spend decent money. Now, obviously, you haven't been seeing the budget I've been working with because there's no way that I can actually get rid of the budget. For obvious reasons, the manager objectives wouldn't allow it and plus the confidence rate and I'd get sacked straight away. What I have been doing, as you can see, is try to keep it as realistic as possible, spending little amounts of money from the league two all the way to the championship but in the premier league we would have been given a decent amount of money to play with something between 40 to 50 million i'm assuming so that's probably what i will spend in the first season but it all depends on how we do in the premier league next season in regards to how much money i do spend in the future seasons we have started this season off by selling Joaquin into Kachea for £4.15 million. Yep, that took a lot of takes to get right. We've also just sold the keeper that we got on a free a couple of seasons ago, are now tennis for £25.3 million. And we have our first signing of this season. Matthias, the Brazilian keeper, has come from Braga for £11 million. We've made yet another signing that massively bolsters the strength of our defensive lineup. We brought in the Argentinian centre back, Lucas Martinez Quarter, for £20 million. And we brought in yet another defender that massively strengthens the defensive lineup. Rick Karsdorp has come for 20 million. And this is how the team looks after that transfer window. And I've got to say, considering we didn't really spend that much, the signings that we've made have massively strengthened this side. There's only a couple of places that realistically do need improving. We need another striker for the Premier League. I don't think Moose is going to cut the mustard. The midfield will do for now, but next season I want to sort that out. And I would like another left back and centre back. Other than that, I could not be happy with this side now our main objective for this season is to avoid relegation and i'm completely ignoring that i want a mid-table finish if we can get a mid-table finish i will be delighted with that so at the midway point of this season we are indeed around that mid-table spot which i am absolutely buzzing with our first season in the premier league and we are more than holding our own i think we're a couple of signings away from genuinely challenging for european football in the coming seasons we begin this transfer window by selling manuel lanzini for eight and a half million we have just signed Hans Heitbauer on a free and this is how the team looks after that transfer window has come to an end and it's crazy how one signing can make this team look so much better as well as that there's noticeable improvement within the team Monks 88 rated Vales 81 rated Tardy's 81 rated our signings Martinez Quarter and Karsdorp have both gone up as well I'm just hoping that we can keep the form that we've got right now and maybe even reach a top 10 finish that would be brilliant so we have come to the end of the first season 
season that we spent in the Premier League and we finished 13th. Now, that isn't too bad considering our main objective from the board this year was to just avoid relegation. The fact that we've avoided relegation and pushed for mid-table finish is quite impressive to me. But the fact that we'll be able to spend more money next year on the squad means that next season we will be pushing for a European spot. Meanwhile, it was Spurs who won the FA Cup, Liverpool won the Carabao Cup, Everton won the Europa Conference League, Russian Munching Gladbach won the Europa League, and it was PSG this time who won the Champions League. I'm aware that it's the Premier League and it's a fair season in there, but Jesus goddamn Christ, our front three this year did not perform in the slightest. I think we definitely need to buy a new striker. Music's been very good for the time that he's been with us, but I think it's time to find a better striker than Musset. As well as getting a striker, I think if we get a couple of more centre mids, this team will be ready for European football. We have started this season off with a pretty big signing. We have brought in Lucas Provod for 25 million. And on top of that, we have secured our star striker in Maximiliano Gomez for 27.4 million. Meanwhile, we have just sold Marcelo Acuna for 6.7 million. We have also just sent out George McEachern on a one year loan deal. We've also just sold Shandon Baptiste for just under 10 million. And replacing Baptiste, we have brought in Papa Matarsar from Tottenham Hotspur for just over 20 million. Meanwhile, we have just managed to sell Matthias for 7.5 4 million. And we have finally broken our bank to get this guy in the team. We drag Rajkovic cost us 27.8 million. And this is how the team looks after that transfer window. And I've got to say, this team looks so much better than it did this time last season. We broke the bank to get these players in. I had to do a little bit of rearranging here and there. But I think it will be worth it. I am smelling European competition for next season. Oh, and Monk's now 90 rated. At some point, a big team is going to come in with big money for this guy and I just ain't going to be able to say no and then we will definitely be on the route for the Champions League. This is definitely more like it. Fifth in the league at the midway point of this season. This is definitely where we want to be at this point in the rebuild. I find it quite ironic that Everton are top of the league in this career mode, yet in real life they are facing relegation. In fairness, I reckon if we can keep this form up, we are looking at the Champions League. There's only two points that separate ourselves from fourth place Southampton and third place Manchester United, so you never know what could actually happen. All we need to do is keep our form as it is. Easy said than done, I realise that, but it's not like we haven't got the team to pull this out of the bag. This other team looks after that transfer window we did absolutely nothing frankly because we got no money to and i didn't really want to sell any of my players or send anyone out on loan i was really lazy but there's been a massive improvement in this team in this starting 11 you can visibly see that the players that we have brought in have definitely shot up like a rocket and overall gomez 83 tardy man what a signing this guy has become on a free, all the way back in season three, I think it was, or season two, one of the two. And he's turned out to be one of the best players we've got in the team. Genuinely intrigued to see where we finish this season. I really hope we finish in a European spot, even if it is the Conference League. So we have come to the end of this season, and check it out, lads. We have fucking done it. We are in the Champions League next season. Can you believe that it only took us two seasons in the Premier League to get to this point? Not only did we get to the Champions League as well, we were three points clear of fifth place Everton, which I am buzzing with this. Don't get me wrong, I was expecting European football next season, but I was not expecting the big one, the Champions League itself. This means that next season we can finally start delving into the money we've been allocated. Meanwhile, it was Tottenham Hotspur who won the FA Cup. It was Manchester United who won the Carabao Cup. Real Sociedad won the Europa Conference League. Bayer Leverkusen won the Europa League. And this time it was Atletico Madrid who were crowned champions of Europe. Okay, I'll give credit where credit's due. Monk had a half decent season this time. 19 goals, 8 assists and the man is 91 rated at 21 years old. This guy, I don't know why people aren't coming in for him. If I saw this guy on the market, I would definitely be throwing every bit of pennies I had to get this guy my team. Harvey Vale isn't too far behind him either. 87 rated at 22 years old. Jesus, this man is an absolute machine. Next season though, and it is about goddamn time that we get to do this, we get to make some very big signings. 
Guys, we have been given just under 290 million to play with this season. We are about to have some fun. And our first signing is the Portuguese right back, João Mario, and he cost us just over 51 million. Our next signing is a massive signing as well. Ezri Conta came from Frankfurt for 60 million. We have finally signed Nicolo Barella for just over 112 million. Easily the biggest signing we've done thus far. With us being in the Champions League this season, it's not good enough to have only one decent keeper available so that's why I have brought in the Belgian youngster Martin van der Voort for just over 43 million. Let's be honest guys it wouldn't be one of my rebuilds if we didn't get at least one free agent a season but in this case we got three in a row. We got Martel, we got Frabotte and we got Arribas all on a free and this is how the team looks after that transfer window. We have well and truly splashed some cash in order to improve this team and let me tell you something originally I thought to myself yeah the Champions League Fair enough, but we won't have a chance of winning it. Depending on who we get drawn against, I reckon we've actually got a half decent shot at it. There's only a couple of players and a couple of positions that realistically do need improving a little bit more. The left back and our centre back, for example. But even in them cases, they're still a decent player. So really, it all depends on who we get drawn against if we are successful in getting out of the group stage. And this is quite a two-sided group, if I'm being honest. You've got ourselves, Juve, RB Salzburg and Sparta, Moscow, all in Group A. Now, logically, you would think it's ourselves and Juve that will progress to the round of 16. Probably Juve topping the group ourselves being second or vice versa. RB Salzburg probably posed the biggest threat to us, but realistically, I'm not too worried about going out. So, we quite comfortably went through to the round of 16. We did lose one game, but we were quite dominant throughout the group. But what shot me is Juve have been knocked out and sent to the Europa League and RB Salzburg are through to the round of 16 with us. That I find absolutely mesmerising. But we aren't knocked out, so I'm not really too fussed. Round of 16 opponents, who is it? We're up against Shakhtar Donetsk. Okay, round of 16, Shakhtar Donetsk. I will take that. However, I do not accept this at all. Why are we 10th in the league? What is going on? Right, okay, let's look at this objectively. There's only five points that separate ourselves from fifth place Spurs. Six, if you're going to be pedantic, and include fourth place Leeds United. But this still is nowhere near good enough. We've almost lost more games than we've won. That is freaking abysmal. What is going on with us in the Premier League, man? We always either do really well in the Premier League and do shit in Europe, or do really well in Europe and do shit in the league. There is never an in-between. I've made a sale in this transfer window. We have sold Pape Matarsa for £28.5 million. And this is how the team looks after that transfer window has come to an end. We only really did one sale, and that was for Pape Matarsa. Overall, though, if you actually look at this team, it is actually a very, very strong side. The weakest part is definitely the defence, I'd love another centre back, I'd love another left back and I'd definitely like Van der Voort to improve a little bit during the duration of the second part of this season. But I still maintain the fact when I say we have actually got a good shot at winning the Champions League this season depending on who we get drawn against and we could not have asked for a better opponent to start with in Shakhtar Donetsk in the round of 16. Away from home in the first leg of the round of 16 against Shakhtar, looking at both sides I've got to say that we've got to be the favourites man, we've got to be the undeniable favourites going into this leg. We are at the Donbass Arena. I'm counting on our front three to pretty much carry us during the duration of our Champions League journey. So let's see if we can get an advantage going into the second leg. We do. Mousset of all bloody players gets the goal and Barella gets a goal also. It does look like we dominated the game. A little bit of a caution going into the second leg as well. This should really be a formality. We should just finish Shakhtar off right now. We're at home. Stamford Bridge. Let's see if we can put this game to bed and move on to the quarter Oh, we do in quite a convincing fashion. Vale got two, Toddy got two. We progressed to the quarterfinals. I can't lie, I feel like I've been shafted here. Barcelona in the quarterfinals, man. Chelsea versus Barcelona. This age-old rivalry in the Champions League extends itself to this rebuild. We're away from home in the first leg. I'm nervous going into this. I really am nervous going into this. But let's see if we can't pull up a little bit of an upset. Oh, we do as well. We win 2-1 away from home. Gomez and Vale getting the goals. And to Fati game one back for Barcelona. But we do go to the second leg with a 2-1 cushion. A draw would do. Genuinely, I would take a draw at this point. 
Stamford Bridge, Chelsea versus Barcelona, quarterfinal second leg. Let's just put this game to bed. Not Barcelona out of this competition. Come on! Maximilian Gomez with the brace, knocking out Barcelona in the process. Have that, you pricks. The final team before the Champions League final, Real Madrid versus Chelsea. And if I remember correctly, it was Real Madrid in Chelsea in the semi-finals the last time Chelsea actually won the Champions League. So this is a little bit of deja vu in my opinion. We're at the Bernabeu in the first leg away from home. Let's see if history can repeat itself. Yes, it can. Barella with the brace. 2-0 up against Real Madrid in their backyard. One more game and we are in the final. I don't care about anything else at this point. I don't care how we're doing in the league, FA Cup, Carabao Cup, the fucking Papa John's trophy. I don't give two craps. All I care about now is us not pulling the Tottenham Hotspur and not choking this lead that we've got 2-0 at home in the second leg against Madrid. Trust me when I say this is a very good position to be in. Let's see if we can prove myself right. Book our place in the... F Come on! 3-2 on aggregate. That is why the first leg is so important that you take a convincing lead. Alvude and Greenman Beach did get the goals, but Monk cancelled them two goals out with a goal of his own. We are in the Champions League finals in the first season entering into the composition once again after being relegated to League 2 through loads of bullshit. So on the 29th of May 2027, it is Atletico Madrid versus Chelsea in the Champions League final. The good old Atletico Madrid. So we've beaten Barca, beaten Madrid. Now it's time to beat Atletico Madrid in the final. But before we actually do that, let's see how we've done elsewhere this season so this season we didn't do half as well as i wanted to we finished fifth in the premier everton did bloody bits this season didn't they they won the bloody premier all well, considering what was happening in real life this is ridiculously unrealistic let's be honest but everton do win three points clear of manchester united four points clear of liverpool southampton leicester city man city below us where are arsenal okay well oh what it is literally always arsenal in the bottom half isn't it? arsenal are just so shit on career mode meanwhile it was newcastle United beating Arsenal to win the FA Cup. I mean, I told you they were shit. Manchester City won the Carabao Cup. Royal Antwerp beat Spurs to win the Europa Conference. Like, I really could not hold that laughter in there. Two London clubs getting shat on. Love it. And Valencia won the Europa League. It's safe to say we found a front three that actually worked. Monk, 22 goals, 12 assists. Gomez, 21 goals, 2 assists. Vale, 20 goals, 10 assists. They all got over 20 goals. That is incredible stuff. You've got Barrale, 30 years old, 16 goals, 10 assists. Yeah, yeah, Torre-esque. Very impressive stats considering if you take away the Champions League final that we're in right now, which we haven't really done that well at all this season. To say I'm gutted about this is a freaking understatement. Monk, the guy who has been sensational from season one to now, has been suspended for the final. This is an absolute joke, man. Atletico's team is the same as he always is. It's freaking disgusting, and no doubt they're going to be a thorn in my asshole. But nevertheless, it is Atletico Madrid versus Chelsea at Benfica Stadium. You know, I can't believe it took me all day and all night to realise that I have a Chelsea shirt, I have three Chelsea shirts in my wardrobe, and I don't put a single one on for this video. I am a tool.
Diaz. Can we close him down? Shit. Oh my god, what a goal. Oh, not like this. Atletico Madrid, man. They just know how to unlock my defense at the back. No matter what I do, they always seem to find a way to score against me. Atletico are playing Man U in the Champions League tonight, and I really, really hope that United actually start playing like United and beat them. Come on, now it's our turn. Let's set them on the counter-attack. Come on. Can people make runs for me, for goodness sake? Oh, that one too was sexy. We can take this all the way with Harvey Vale here. Surely. Come on. Finish this. Beautiful. That one too was a work of absolute art. Harvey Vale gets into a bit of space. Got the pace. He's got the power. He's got the precision. He's got the accuracy. And it is one all. That's what we need to do. There's no way we're beating Atletico Madrid head-on with attacks. We need to counter-attack them. It's the only way we can score. Oh, no. Oh, what a tackle. Harvey Vale. Oh, what a ball. All right, this could be the time. This could be the chance. Oh, fuck. Oh, do you know what Atletico Madrid can suck my dick? I hate Atletico Madrid. That is the half-time whistle. We go into it one all. I hate Atletico Madrid so fucking much. Never ask me to rebuild Atletico. We just need to soak up their attack and hit them on the counter-attack. All we need to do. King Karsdorp. Oh, Karsdorp is through. Karsdorp is through. Definitely not one. Oh, please, please don't miss. Oh, my God. Of all players to be in that position, Karsdorp is definitely not who I wanted there. But Jesus Christ, for a right back, he has got a rocket of a right foot and he knows exactly where the back of the net is. 75th minute, 2 1 up we go. Can Cars don't get. Oh my god, he's through again. He's through again. I'm telling you, Cars don't gets away. There is absolutely nobody catching him. And he's going to have another shot. Oh, this time he wasn't as clinical. He finds Maximiliano Gomez. Gomez. He sees him in the middle. Oh, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. We're going to. Oh, ho, ho. I can't believe I've just fucking done that. Why did I do that? Just shoot, you absolute tit. Why? What is the need for excessive showing off? That's got to be it, surely. We're going to whip this. In. Oh, oh, hang on. That went nowhere near where I wanted it to. But it does not matter. We have just made Chelsea Football Club three-time European champions. We sent them to League Two with absolutely no star-studded power. We rebuilt them from the ground up. It took us around six or seven seasons to do it. But we finally got them back to where they belong on top of the world. If you enjoyed this rebuild and want me to do more of them a bit like this, leave a comment down below on what team you want me to do it with next. And if you did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like. Smash the shit out of that subscribe button. Can we get three likes for three Champions Leagues, baby? That is all from me. It has been your boy Godwin. I hope you guys have a fantastic afternoon. And until next time, I'll see you later.